Berberine has already been covered by several other channels. But as always, we're going to take a look at this multi-purpose health and longevity supplement in rather more detail. So if you're considering using this natural compound and want the full picture regarding exactly what berberine can and can't do, then keep watching. Especially as many of the exciting benefits of berberine have been missed or ignored by other reviews. But all those benefits will be covered here and of course backed up by reliable study data, anecdotal evidence and the personal experimentation of both myself and my clients. Berberine is an isoquinoline alkaloid belonging to the proto-berberine alkaloids. It was first discovered in 1830 and it's naturally present in a variety of plants including barberry and golden seal. Now berberine is yellowish in color and in the past it was commonly used as a dye for wood, leather and wool so you definitely don't want to get it on your clothes or soft furnishings. But more notable is its use in traditional Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine where berberine containing plants have a long history of treating infections throughout the centuries. In particular it was and still is commonly prescribed to alleviate diarrhea. Berberine has been found to exert its positive effects through several different pathways. This quite remarkable compound has been shown to increase the enzyme AMPK, which is the master metabolic switch in each of our cells. When AMPK levels increase, we get an energy boost. Blood glucose is regulated, insulin sensitivity improves, triglycerides are reduced, and increased fat burning in our mitochondria takes place. Additionally, Berberine suppresses the mTOR pathway, which may benefit lifespan, aging, and cellular senescence. Berberine also increases brain levels of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. Plus, it also preserves long-term potentiation in synapses, which is highly important to signal transmission between neurons, something that's normally diminished as a result of diabetes. We also have numerous studies supporting berberine's efficacy as an antibacterial, antifungal and antiviral agent. And not only that, the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory activities of berberine can be measured by changes in oxidative stress markers, antioxidant enzymes and pro-inflammatory cytokines, resulting in inhibition of oxidative stress and inflammation in a variety of tissues, including liver, adipose, kidney and pancreas. But that's just a brief overview of the basic modes of action of berberine. We'll expand on those in a second, as we're now going to focus on berberine's wide range of benefits when taken as a health supplement. And in case you're wondering, berberine is far superior to the pharmaceutical metformin for anyone who doesn't currently suffer from diabetes. And even then, as we'll discuss, it can still be a valuable adjunct therapy to metformin use. Type 2 diabetes is on the rise worldwide. The number one cause of this is without doubt poor dietary and exercise habits. Now I'm not for a minute suggesting that berberine or even metformin for that matter is a substitute for a healthy lifestyle. However, the use of berberine to lower blood sugar levels and improve insulin resistance has been proven by every single reliable study to date. So there's no question that it can be of great benefit here, not only for those with type 2 diabetes, but also for healthy individuals. Additionally, Berberine will also lower triglycerides and benefit your hemoglobin A1c blood test results. So here's the question that most people ask. Is berberine as effective as the prescription drug metformin with regard to the treatment of type 2 diabetes? Well, the simple answer to that is no, it's not. However, there's no reason why both can't be taken together, so long as the appropriate reduction in metformin dosage recommended by your medical doctor is applied. And of course, this would allow you to benefit from all the advantages of berberine that we're about to discuss. So what about pre-diabetic or very mild type 2 diabetes symptoms? Which would be your better option? Well, in my opinion, the appropriate lifestyle changes together with berberine would get my vote every time. But do bear in mind that I am primarily a life extension researcher, consultant and author. I'm not a medical doctor. So this is simply my educated opinion, which in no way should be misconstrued as medical advice. Berberine plays an antidepressant role by regulating brain neurotransmitters, especially biogenic amines, and has been shown to have a high affinity for dopamine receptors. Berberine increases the level of L-DOPA in the blood, which then enters the brain through the circulation and is converted into dopamine, thereby improving brain function. Generally speaking, an increase in dopamine is closely related to positive emotions and may also alleviate anxiety. 
Several studies have found that berberine inhibits cancer cell proliferation through several mechanisms. It's been shown to exert anti-tumor effects against lung cancer, cervical cancer, and liver cancer, as well as leukemia and other malignancies. Alterations in the cell cycle can promote the development of cancer, however berberine promotes the regulation of cell cycle, thereby inhibiting cell proliferation in multiple cancers. Another important aspect of berberine's ability to prevent cancer involves apoptosis, which is simply a gene-controlled form of cell death that plays an important role in health and disease. Now, berberine has been shown to promote apoptosis by activating caspases, which are enzymes that play an essential role in programmed cell death. And finally, other properties of berberine that contribute to its anti-cancer effects include its ability to regulate cell autophagy, its highly beneficial anti-inflammatory properties, and its antioxidant activity. Many studies in both animals and humans have demonstrated berberine's ability to promote fat loss in overweight subjects. In one notable 2012 study, obese human subjects were given 500 mg of berberine three times daily over a 12-week period. An average fat loss of 5 pounds, or 2.27 kg, was experienced by the study participants. But perhaps more importantly from a health standpoint, the berberine treatment significantly reduced blood lipid levels, with a 23% decrease in triglycerides and a 12.2% decrease in cholesterol levels. Interestingly, when tested, an increase in calcitrol levels has been seen in all study subjects following berberine supplementation. Now we know that calcitrol has several important functions in the body, including maintaining serum calcium levels by increasing calcium absorption in the gastrointestinal tract, and by promoting healthy bone formation by the calcification of osteoid tissue. Berberine has also been shown to improve osteoarthritis by inhibiting cartilage damage. So as you can see, berberine really is turning out to be a multi-benefit supplement, and there's still more to come. Basically, the function of an epigenetic modulator is to turn genes on or off as required. A good example would be cancer protective genes. Now, over the past decade, several studies have found that berberine is rather effective in this regard, which leads us to ask the question, what triggers cells to turn particular genes on or off? Well, it signals from other cells that activate proteins called transcription factors. These proteins then bind to regulatory regions of a gene and increase or decrease the level of transcription. Studies have shown berberine's epigenetic modulation properties to be particularly relevant in the treatment of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and various cancers, and more on cancer to follow shortly. Studies have consistently found berberine to have a positive effect on cholesterol levels. A recent 2020 study examined the effects of berberine on cardiovascular risk factors involving a group of 84 Chinese men with high cholesterol levels. Interestingly, the research study also examined if berberine's effects may involve testosterone levels in men. The 12-week study was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial where the subjects were given either 500 mg twice daily of berberine or a placebo. Measurements of cardiovascular risk factors and testosterone levels were taken at baseline, at 8 weeks, and at 12 weeks. At the end of 12 weeks, the study subjects given the berberine supplement showed significant reductions in both total cholesterol and HDL cholesterol, together with a slight increase in testosterone levels as compared to those given the placebo. Now, the beneficial effects of berberine on cholesterol levels really shouldn't come as much of a surprise, as this is a well-established benefit of berberine supplementation. However, berberine's potential effects on testosterone levels were somewhat of a surprise. Now, I have since looked into this further, and I can confirm that any testosterone increase is sex-specific to males only. There will be no increase in testosterone levels experienced by women taking berberine. And interestingly, for any men who might be feeling concerned regarding increased testosterone levels in relation to prostate issues, let me be clear that any potential increases in testosterone, although measurable, were extremely small. And in any case, animal studies have consistently shown that berberine actually improves testosterone-induced benign prostate hyperplasia, again reinforcing the multi-benefit characteristics of this amazing natural compound. 
some of the underlying mechanisms driving berberine's role in lipid lowering and insulin sensitivity are not yet fully understood. However, there are indications that it may be in part related to its positive effects on regulating our gastrointestinal microbiota, which is simply a term for the bacteria, fungi and viruses that live in our digestive tracts. Our gut microbiota is an important environmental factor that interacts with its host, participating in the likelihood or otherwise of the occurrence and development of various diseases. Now, there are several clinical studies showing that berberine can be beneficial in treating many of those diseases, including, of course, diabetes, as well as hyperlipidemia, cancer, metabolic syndrome, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and liver disease. And it does so by way of regulation of our gastrointestinal microbiota. As we've seen, berberine has wide-ranging benefits when taken as a supplement, and I've been taking it daily without fail for several years. Before berberine, I used to take metformin, but purely for its proposed anti-cancer and life extension benefits, having never had any indications of pre-diabetic markers in my yearly blood test results. However, I ditched the metformin in favor of berberine, especially as some of the benefits of metformin for non-diabetic individuals have now been disproven. Basically, berberine does more for my health than metformin ever could, and without any of the potential negatives, such as decreased exercise performance and the risk of vitamin D B12 deficiency. The most common daily berberine dosage ranges from between 1 to 2 grams per day. In most cases, a total daily dosage of 1500 milligrams will provide excellent overall results. This dosage should be split into three separate doses of 500 milligrams taken before meals. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner would be ideal. If you generally eat less than three meals per day, then it's okay to take your berberine on an empty stomach, as it will still be absorbed without problem. Now, I personally take two grams per day split as follows. One gram with my morning high fruit content smoothie, 500 milligrams with lunch, and 500 milligrams of my evening meal. Berberine is a well-studied, safe supplement. Other than the risk of a mild stomach upset in sensitive individuals, which is usually either transient or can be alleviated by taking with food, there's only one other possible side effect that may need monitoring. And that's if it's taken alongside a blood sugar lowering pharmaceutical, as this is obviously one of berberine's primary modes of action, so it could potentially lower blood sugar levels excessively in such a scenario. I would strongly suggest seeking the advice of your medical doctor before taking berberine if you're already receiving treatment for diabetes or have been diagnosed with any relevant medical condition. As with all supplements, price, quality and dosage per capsule can vary considerably. My personal criteria when selecting any supplement is quality first. Now there's currently only two products that meet my criteria where berberine is concerned and both these brands offer high quality berberine in filler-free capsules, so there's absolutely nothing but pure berberine in there. The first is from the research company Do Not Age, and the other is from Paradise Herbs. The Do Not Age product is the one that I personally use, and it's somewhat cheaper than the Paradise Herbs offering, undoubtedly due to the fact that Do Not Age products are only available direct, so no reseller profits to pay. Paradise Herbs berberine is available in 60 or 120 capsule packs and you'll find the link in the video description with 5% off. Do Not Age Berberine is available in 60 or 366 capsule packs, and Do Not Age have very kindly provided viewers of this video with a 10% discount code, which is on screen now, and this code will also work with any of the products in their range. Many thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this presentation, then perhaps you'd like to subscribe to the channel. You'll have my instant love and gratitude, plus you'll be notified of all future uploads. Lastly, as always, take care, be healthy and see you again soon.